What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Warm Beach Students Online. I am Jake, and I'm so glad that you're joining us. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is this week, and, and as many of you know, I love Thanksgiving. I love it because of the food. I love it because uh, there's it's a day full of football, usually. Um, I love it because of the time with friends and family. You all know that I love Thanksgiving. But I was thinking about it and I was thinking about, you know, what am I thankful for? I'm thankful for Melissa. I'm thankful for her, for being able to do life with someone who loves me, loves Jesus, loves y'all. Uh, I love Melissa. She's awesome. Um, our boys, man, they're crazy, but they're awesome. And I'm super grateful for them. I'm thankful for this church and everyone in it. Uh, it's so great to be a part of a church family like this. Um, and I'm thankful for y'all. I love each and every one of you guys, and, and I, I truly am thankful um, for each and every one of you guys and, and love love y'all, love our time together. Um, and I say all that because we all have things we're thankful for. Maybe it's your family. Maybe you're thankful for the church, the youth group. Maybe you're thankful for the Green Bay Packers. Go Pack Go. I'm sure, you, I'm sure your list could go on and on and on, and, and but maybe there's something that happened this year. There's been a lot that's happened, but but maybe there's something that's keeping you from from thinking about what what you're thankful for and, and those good things. Maybe it's big, maybe it's a ton of small things that just kept piling up. Uh, but let's face it, there are all kinds of things that that can keep us from be, from being thankful. Whether it's tension in a fa in your family, maybe you lost a loved one this year, maybe you're tired of doing the whole uh, distance learning for school. Maybe you're just tired in general of all the COVID stuff and, and all of that stuff. Uh, maybe you're burnt out and just frustrated with all the, the political stuff and the election and, and the fighting happening. Because whatever it is, uh, maybe going into Thanksgiving this week and this year, um, you're feeling just the weight of everything going on. And, and maybe you're struggling feeling thankful. Um, and, and we're going to spend the next couple of minutes looking at um, a passage from 1 Thessalonians because Paul speaks to and helps shares advice for times and moments and situations like this, where maybe, maybe you're just not feeling the whole thankfulness vibe this year. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18. Paul says, Rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And so Paul is giving advice, and there's three things that Paul highlights here um, that, that I want us to consider and think about this week and, and moving forward, but especially this week as we move into Thanksgiving. The first piece of advice Paul says in verse 16, rejoice always. I get it. This could be hard. And difficult. We don't always want to be, you know, happy, and we don't always want to rejoice and praise, you know, for for those that have lost a loved one. Like you look at that empty chair at Thanksgiving, and 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 it's hard. You think about all the crazy things that have happened this year, and and the last thing you want to do is is be rejoiceful. Yeah, Paul encourages the church at Thessalonica, Thessalonica to rejoice always. Be and and he's doing this knowing that many of the people in this church were under um, the impression that Jesus was going to return soon. Like Jesus was coming back. Like he was like, he was like, hit pause. I'll be right back. Um, and, and they were dealing with confusion and frustration and anger when, when it didn't happen and when it didn't keep happening. And so Paul is writing this be, to a people who are not only confused, but they're, they're actually mourning. They're actually upset and sad. Um, especially as family members began to die because they thought Jesus was coming back. Like they had heard the gospel. They had heard all the things that had been written about Jesus and what they had been taught. And they're, they're wondering what, what the heck, man, like where, where's, where's Jesus at? And, and so as Paul, right, Paul is writing this letter to encourage them to rejoice always, not because Jesus is coming back like right now, but because our hope, can be found and rooted in Christ Jesus. Look what he says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 
He says, brothers and sisters, we don't we don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him to rejoice. Always Paul's writing means placing our hope in Jesus Christ, even when things are tough, even when things are confusing, even when we're tired and just frustrated with everything. Everything rejoice always means placing our hope in Jesus. Second piece of advice Paul gives, we see in verse 17 pray continually, or as some versions say, pray without ceasing. Now, what Paul is trying to communicate to these Christians all these centuries ago and to us today was to have a prayerful attitude in all situations. I'm not saying like Every second of every day, y'all need to be praying. Like when you're walking down the stairs, your eyes are closed and you're praying, Lord, thank you for the snack I'm about to get. Don't do that because you're going to fall and hurt yourself and that's not good. But have that, have an attitude of prayer in all situations. When you do your schoolwork and, and you enter into those virtual meetings, pray, God, allow me not to just do work to get to Thanksgiving break, but allow me to, to work with an attitude that reflects your goodness. When you're sitting at the dinner table, pray, God, thank you for this food. You know, I try I try to think, you know, another example is, is that when I watch football, like, you know, I'm pretty animated. I get pretty into it. It's, I get kind of crazy. And, you know, a prayer for, for that can be, you know, God, give me the peace and the patience to model a Christ follower for my children who are watching and listening to everything I say and do. Also, forgive me for the ref for calling the ref blind on the last call, and please heal him of his his blindness. I'm just joking about that and being, you know, a little sarcastic with that, but the point that Paul is driving at here is pray in all situations. No matter what you're doing, pray. Ask God to be with you. Ask God to help you. Ask God to, to show you how to be an example of him to all around you. Are you modeling a life of prayer for your siblings, your friends, your your family, uh, other followers of Jesus? Have a attitude of prayer in all situations. Last piece of advice Paul gives us, uh, he says, give thanks in all situations. Look at verse 18 again. Paul says, give thanks in all circumstances. Notice that he says the word in and not for. Paul isn't saying be thankful for failing your test or your phone breaking or having the worst luck ever. What Paul is saying is that when bad things happen, be thankful that God is with you, that God won't abandon you in those moments. During those bad times, be thankful for the presence of God and for the good that that could come and will come from those difficult times. See, God doesn't cause bad things to happen, so don't thank him for the evil in your life. But God, in his goodness and mercy, teaches us that new thing teaches us will teach us new things in bad situations. He shows us uh, just how strong our faith can be, but he also shows us that he is faithful and with us in all things. The church in Thessalonica they had members facing persecution, and Paul was reminding them in in these desperate times to continue to believe in God, continue to trust God. I heard a pastor once say that my circumstances don't define my God. It is my God who redefines my circumstances. See, y'all, the point that Paul is saying here in 1 Thessalonians, and it was true then, just like it's true today, is that we can give thanks because we have a God who redefines our circumstances. We have a God who is not defined by what happens to us, but who redefines those things for our good and for his glory. And so even though things are, are out of whack this year, things feel different and challenging and chaotic, Think about Paul's encouragement to the church in 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always. Pray continually. And in all things, give thanks. Hey, I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy uh, whatever that's going to look like. But remember to be thankful because we have a God who is with us every single moment of every single day, no matter the circumstances we find ourselves in. Have a good week, y'all. And we'll we'll check in next week.